Hey guys, so the form that we'll be creating in this particular uh, video is a simple form like this, which has some basic styling. I'm actually going to show you how to do all of this from scratch. So creating a form, creating a custom form in Framer, styling it like this, and then selecting some data. And as you can see, like it has some basic validation as well, which normal HTML forms have. So it's gonna be that, and then I can type a message and then I can click on submit. We're gonna get a confirmation here, done nice work AM design, and this is going to land into our Google Sheet. So I'm gonna show you all of that, so stay tuned and do subscribe. For a recent client, I actually created this functionality and I figured out like not a lot of people are talking about it. That client also had Framer Forms purchased. So something you see here, and I'm like surprised that a lot of people are using Framer Forms. Um, to me, it's not really worth it, but I mean, uh, I don't want to diss on them, but the fact is that it does not even have basic validation, like basic HTML validation. And obviously you can't send data from Framer Forms directly to Google Docs or something along those lines. So that was a limitation that I encountered there as well, apart from obviously tons of other limitations. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to actually go ahead and do that in Framer. So the first thing, I'm gonna be creating a custom form. I'm gonna also show you how to actually style it and then send data. So in order to do that, you just need to create obviously a uh, uh, a form in or as a React component in Framer. So I'm gonna create like form or something along those lines. Here I have the form and I'm gonna just start adding things. So the first thing I wanna add is I wanna add a where exactly the form is going to be sent. So the form dest or the form URL or something along those lines. Let's just name it at that. Name it that. Then we have a basic form. So I'm gonna say. Okay, one other thing that you can see, we have some styling applied here, so we can probably use that. So I'm gonna say this is going to be a form and this is also going to be a form. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the action or where this is going to actually submit the data is going to be our form URL, which we will fill out later. And then we have a method. So we want this form to post, not get data. So since this is posting, we're gonna say the method is going to be post. And then we're just gonna insert a bunch of input fields. So we're gonna say the name for this input field is going to be first underscore name. And I'm just trying to do this really quickly. I'm not gonna again uh, show you how to style everything. I guess like I'll show you how to style something. Actually, let me just do that so you can tweak it later on if you want to. A lot of people are confused by React and style. So I'm gonna say this is going to be my input style. That's done. Let's just create our input style here as well. Input style. S-T-Y-L-E, and then we can obviously style it later. But for now, we have the first name, we have the last name, we have the email, and then we have the message. These are the fields, let's say, that we actually want to send. So I'm gonna say last name, and let me just add the placeholder here as well. Type something. Let's just keep it generic. Okay, let's delete all of this again, so we can have that. Okay, so this is going to be our last name. This is going to be our email. Also, one important thing is I can just type uh, the type here. The type is going to be text. Here, the type is going to be text as well. Here, the type is going to be email because we want basic email validation here, which unfortunately, as I mentioned, isn't really present in Framer Forms. So something like this required. Let's make all of these fields required. And then we have a basic text area. So let's just go ahead and add that text area here. Well, we don't really need to add anything inside of it. So let's just say that the name is going to be the message and the style is going to be our input style. So basically the same style, input style. And if we save it, we can see the form on the right. And now let's just go ahead and actually give some styling. So we have a display flex here on the form. We are gonna say that this particular form is gonna flow in a particular direction. So maybe the horizontal direction. So flex direction is going to be column and everything should start following um, vertically for the input style. Let's just, and we also need a gap between these fields. So let's just give a gap. It can be eight or maybe 16. The input style is going to be padding. Let's just give it a padding first, padding eight, 12 pixels, 16 pixel maybe. And then I think that should be it. Let's just consider that it. And we can obviously give a border radius if we want border radius four or eight or 12. Let's just give it, or maybe let's just make them all four pixels. I don't really like a lot of border radius. Um, so that is done. Let's also add a placeholder to the text area as well. Say, type your message. There you go. And maybe obviously we need the text area to be a bit larger. So I'm just gonna say that the rows are gonna be five. 
row sorry rows are going to be five and then we have a button at the bottom that's going to send the data so we're going to say input type is going to be of submit the value of the button is going to be submit and there you go so we have a button here and maybe we want to style the button so i'm just going to say that this button is going to take a button style and let's just go ahead and add a button style here so the background can be hash 222 and the color can be white the font size or sorry the font weight can be 600 and maybe the padding can be 12 pixels 16 pixels similar to our input fields and maybe the border can be none so border none <clears throat> Okay, so that's done. This is our form. If you want to insert it, we can just insert it here. Now, as you can see, we can't really scale it. So in order to scale it, we can just go at the top. And as you can see, we have these two values written here, which says like framer supported layout width. So if we want to change or modify this layout width, we can say any uh, prefix prefer fixed. So if we just replace that with both height and width, we should be able to change the width now. So I can go here, I can say this should be fixed and I can resize it or do whatever. And if this was within an auto layout, so for example, this is, sorry, a stack, then I can also say that this is going to be fill container or something along those lines. So I can tweak all of that stuff. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm just gonna publish it and see if the form is working fine. So publish, and if we try to submit it, obviously the fields, are saying that they're not done correctly. The email validation is at least getting some basic validation. I also don't really like the borders on the input style. So let me just go ahead and remove them. Uh, border none. There we go. And now we should not have the border. And now let's just go ahead and actually link this form to our Google form or Google sheet. So in order to do that, you need to create an extension here. So you're gonna go to extension, you're gonna say app scripts. Once you actually say that you're gonna land into a page like this, you're gonna have some files here in this particular editor and you can open or create a new script. So I'm gonna add a new script. I'm gonna say this is going to be my framer form script or something. And then I'm gonna say this is going to post uh, the data. It's gonna receive an event from that form. And what we need to do here is we need to define all of the data that we are actually going to get from this form. So we can say variable row, and this row is going to have, let's say, a bunch of data parameter. E dot parameter is going to fetch the value of our first name. Actually, let me see if I actually what. So yes, this is first name, last name, email, message, and that's it. First name, last name, email, message. Okay. So we have first name, we have last name, we have email, and then we have message. So we already got this particular data. Now we have to fetch the sheet that we actually want to send this data on. So we're gonna say spreadsheet dot app. So this is a service that allows us to access our spreadsheets and we can access this spreadsheet by open ID, open by ID or open by URL. I'm just gonna say open by URL. So here is our URL for the spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna copy this, sorry. I'm just gonna copy this URL that you see here and you can copy it on your end as well. And then once you've done that, so this is our sheet. Now we wanna say on this sheet that we we just have access to, I wanna append each row that I get of this data. And maybe we're also gonna return a message that basically prints out if a form is submitted successfully. So I'm just gonna say done, nice work, AM design. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. I think that should be done. That should be working. I'm just going to say deploy and I'm going to make a new deployment and I'm just going to deploy. I'm not going to enter anything here. Well, actually, you should make sure that obviously you have access to it and everything. And once you're done, you get this web app. And actually, let me just deploy again to make sure you see the fields here. So when you're deploying, you obviously need to deploy it as a web app. When you're deploying it as a web app, you can give a description. You can make sure that it's executing as you or whatever and decide like who actually has access to this web app. Um, and then you can deploy it. Once you've deployed it, you're gonna get a screen like this, which is gonna allow you to copy the web app URL and the deployment ID. I'm gonna copy the web app URL and I'm just gonna paste it into this form URL. And hopefully, hopefully, if I publish this, everything should already be connected and it should be working. So if I go to my form here and I try to type my name, email, and then this is your message and submit it. 
done nice work am design so that's done and hopefully we should have our data here so asad mahmood email and message so email and message is unfortunately not working and i'm let's just see why that is okay i have mentioned like email underscore name obviously it did not fetch any value like that and similarly for the message as well so we're going to do a new deployment here we're going to say deploy and it should work now both the email and the message obviously i was not fetching the correct values which is why it was not working and then I'm just gonna go ahead and update our form URL here as well and publish this. So hopefully it should be working now. I'm just gonna delete the corrupted values and we're gonna go to our framer, sorry. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna say that this is some of the stuff that I want to submit and I'm gonna submit it. And we have this and hopefully all of the values should be here and you can keep on expanding the form as much as you want. But this is basically what I wanted to demo and a really nice easy way in just a few quick steps to actually connect your framer form, how to style it and then obviously post data to any service like this is just one service but you can just create a custom framer form. Uh, and then post data into different places like form spark or mailchimp or like i don't even know so that's pretty much it do let me know if you found this video useful i actually am trying to do things that are that may be a bit more advanced so if this is a bit more advanced it's get going on top of your heads definitely let me know and i can think of slowing down a bit so that's pretty much it see you later take care and do subscribe and do hit the bell icon